Let's face it, animation takes forever and is a pain in the butt. They haven't invented a computer with an animate this button yet, so in order to help preserve the wrists and time of other people obsessed enough with cartoons to make them themselves, I wanted to share some tips. The Rundown. This isn't a tutorial on how to animate. I use Clip Studio Paint EX, and I'm just sharing tools and options you have to make the process slightly less painful. I'll be explaining the steps to do each of these things, but it is under the assumption you already know how to at least set up an animation and draw the frames. These tips should also work for Clip Studio Paint Pro users, though your frames will be limited. Let's jump in. Tip number one, use vector layers for cleanup slash inking. Honestly, I use this even when not animating, but this is a lifesaver for more quickly going through and having nice clean lines on your animation. Vector lines can be resized and rotated without becoming blurry and have quite a few uses. Vector lines typically can be colored more cleanly with fill tools, as well as being adjustable. You can change the width after you've already drawn them, use the vector eraser to erase a line all the way up to where it intersects with another line, or just automatically erase the whole line. Lots of things I'll be getting into further in the list. For now, here's the settings to use the vector eraser to erase up to where it touches another line. As for making sure all your frames in an animation folder are vectors, tip number two, setting up special frames. By special, what I mean is that by default when you add an animation folder to your timeline and then hit the add new frame button, it's going to add a raster layer. If you delete that layer and instead go over to your layers window and hit add vector layer, it will now replace the original frame one on your timeline. Every frame you add in that folder afterwards will now be a vector layer. Just recently I saw from Aaron Schmidt at the Aaron Schmidt on Twitter, this even works for whole folders containing multiple layers. Just drag your folder full of your preferred layout into the animation folder, then go to frame one and right click to open the frame selection menu. Add your folder as frame one and now every frame will be a clean copy of that folder. He advised using this with a cleanup layer, a color layer, and a roughs layer but my rough process is pretty all over the place. When I used this tip for my previous animation, I used it only with the align and color layers within the folder. But this brings me to tip three. Tip number three, use the set reference layer option, but on animation folders, plus tip three and a half, use the lasso fill tool. Okay, this is two more concepts that I use in my normal illustration art, but if you didn't know, you can do this for animation too, which really speeds up your coloring process. If you're using the folder method that puts multiple layers in one frame, it will still work, but it will reference every layer inside, so keep that in mind and plan carefully. Step 1. Right-click the animation folder that contains your line art and choose Layer Settings, then Set as Reference Layer. Step 2. Get the Lasso Fill tool and make sure that you have it set to only transparent, refer multiple, and hit that little reference layer icon there so it'll be selected. I'll show my settings here, but honestly, you're gonna need to fiddle with this to get it exactly to your liking. There's lots of different settings, and it also depends on how big the gaps are in your art, and also how fine the points are within your line art. So it's really a style thing that I can't help with, sorry. <laughs> Step 3. Go to wherever you're keeping your colors separate from your line art, another animation folder or the color layer within the folder if that's what you chose to do, make sure you've clicked the frame you want to color on. It will now reference the folder you chose to set as the reference layer, but only on whatever frame you're currently lined up with, so only the one that's currently visible. Step 4. Starting from the more interlying shapes, loop your tool all the way around the item you want to fill. It should automatically fill it in. If you're using vector layers, like I told you to. You'll also notice you're getting visibly cleaner results than raster layers since you'll have no semi-transparent pixels. Now go nuts and color everything, using however many color layers you'll need to. You'll still need some little touch-ups here and there, but it's much cleaner than the fill bucket and much faster than brush coloring. Tip number four, take advantage of the clip to layer below option. In this example, I'm using my character Fawn here who still needs her lipstick. I've separated her skin onto its own folder to make this easier. Now I can go through and color her lips without worrying about it getting onto her teeth or anything else. Less to worry about and less hassle for me. You can even stack multiple layers to clip to the same folder as you can see here where I've separated her blush for a later tip. 
This can also be used to apply patterns from the materials section so long as you rasterize them first. For some reason, materials don't really like clipping to animation folders, so what can you do? First select your material, then place it directly above the layer of color you want to apply it to. In this case, I'm putting it on Fawn's scarf. Then right click it and hit rasterize to make it a normal layer that you can do stuff with. Go up to clip to layer below and click it and now it will stay only on the layers it's right above. I'm moving the material around here, but if you want to just leave it still, you can get an effect similar to Chowder, where the pattern stays in place while the characters move. This leads into the next couple of tips, though. Tip number five, apply layer modes to animation folders. By layer modes, I mean the little drop-down menu that gives you options for normal, overlay, multiply, etc. I've used it to adjust the look of the scarf pattern here, and I often use it for shading or highlights. Personally, I really like how the glow option looks for really bright highlights, like the shine on eyes or magical effects. But, combining with the clipping tip, this makes shading or extra polish way easier. You don't have to be super exact when you have clipping on, and you can just adjust things after laying down your colors by playing with the modes. Plus, shading with multiply is just my go-to, so I was super happy when I figured out how to do this with animation folders. For Fawn's eyes here, you'll see me using the multiply for the shadows on the eyes and the darker details of the irises and then the glow for the lighter details. Typically I use overlay for eye highlights, but in this case her brown eyes have a very ruby tone that makes her eyes just look really demonically red if I use that. It looks great if you want really vivid colors though. Tip number six, using the tween feature and what it can do. The enable keyframes button makes it where you can no longer draw on a layer so long as it's turned on, but it makes it where you can use different effects. Mainly it's used for moving things around the screen, or tweening, as most people like to call it now. If you just need a small detail you don't want to do frame by frame, or if you have a looping animation like a run cycle, this is a good way to move things around the shot. It can be a little bit jarring when paired with lower frame rate frame by frame, so keep that in mind when planning. Personally, I like it for moving seamless patterns for background effects. I've used it here for Fawn's scarf pattern, but did you know you can affect opacity with the keyframes too? I'll use it for the effect here where when Fawn gives her big pout at the end that her blush will get darker. You can see I already have the opacity turned down a bit. So just set a keyframe right before you want the change to start. Then make another where you want it to end and set your opacity accordingly using the slider. This can be used for color changes or semi-transparent characters or special effects, whatever you want to do with it. Tip number seven, using folders. Not animation folders, but regular folders. If I, for example, want to apply lighting effects in a way that usually would be done at the compositing stage, I'll want them to equally affect the whole character, not just pieces of them. So I'll darken the background color here and say maybe it's an evening time shot with dimmer lighting. So I'll put all the pieces that make up Fawn and I'll group them in one folder. Now when I clip my effects to that folder, it's evenly distributed over the whole thing in every frame. I use this a lot for quick lighting effects like getting the sunset colors just right on the characters in my Freaky Fred animated shot. Plus, using folders to keep organized is just a good idea if you're going to have many pieces to work with like I do. I usually keep a character grouped into their own folder whenever possible once I'm past the rough animation stage. Tip number 8, the outline feature. You've probably seen in the Layer Property tab that there's something called a border effect. This automatically places an outline around the thing you've drawn on that layer, or around a whole folder of layers, which you'll probably see where I'm going with that in a minute. First, I'm going to draw my ghost character here with the vector lines, because the border effect looks smoothest when applied to them. Honestly, just vectors are great. <laughs> I can keep coloring him in like this, and then apply the border effect to the whole animation timeline later, but that's pretty tedious to do. We just went over quick coloring earlier, so why would I want to do this by hand? So instead, I'm going to outline him in vectors, and then go ahead and color him on raster frames using the technique I taught you earlier. We'll skip on ahead to when that's ready. Alright, now I can drag the two layers into its own folder and apply the outline feature to that folder instead. 
Now the whole thing is outlined. I mostly use this feature for outlining a completed character in a white buffer to make it where they stand out against a patterned or colored background in illustrations, but in animation typically I use it for very undetailed or thin objects that would otherwise be tedious to draw. Really skinny objects like wires are perfect for this. Tails that are a single color and are a simple shape are also a really good use for this. This one's pretty simple, so all that's left is doing the same process with the cloud puffs, though they're small so I'm just going to color them by hand since it's just as fast. Then I add a tiny bit of shading and use the keyframe slash tween feature to give the ghost a little bob at the end where he waves. And this one's done. Tip number 9. Using vector curves. Sometimes for a really smooth movement, like a fluttering skirt or like an animal's tail wiggling, it can be easier to stay consistent by using a vector curve. First you use the curved line tool and lay it in vaguely the right place. Just get the general idea down. Next, you pull up your correct line tool. You want the control point option. Go to tool properties and select add control point. Returning to your line, you can now use the correct line tool to drag around the ends, adjust the curve, or click point on the line to add a new bend in it. With the lace brush selected as my brush shape, it's easy to adjust the lace for the end of the dress and add the outline later using our previous tip. Wait, Karma! My curve tool doesn't have that brush shape! You're right! The lace is built into clip and you can download more different brushes, but they are not by default available to use in the line tools. So here's how to make it available. Okay, let's take a look at Clip's effect brushes, since that's where I got the lace. I'll go with the gold chain this time. Go to your menu bar this time and click Window. We want the Sub Tool Detail Window. You can close it when you're done or just put it away somewhere in your workspace if you want to have easy access, but I don't use it very much so I don't have it out by default. Go to Brush Shape. Now click Add to Presets. And you're done! Now when you look at the tool property of any of your shape drawing tools, this will be an option in the brush shape dropdown. Now you can incorporate any wildly complex custom brushes that you own into your animation and save your wrist a lot of pain. Tip number 10. Copy-paste vector lines and other operation tool tricks. That's right, I'm still talking about vector lines. They're just that good. If you've animated in Clip Studio Paint, you'll probably notice that you can't just lasso select pieces of your drawing and then paste them into another frame. You'll just get another frame, but only containing the things you pasted, or worse, nothing. But if you're just trying to transfer a piece of one frame into another frame, how do you do it? With vector lines and the operation tool. Select the line you want to paste with the operation tool. To select multiple lines, hold down shift. If you're not using Windows setup, uh, you're gonna need to look up how to do that. <laughs> Control C to copy, select the frame you want to copy to, and then Control V to paste. And there it is! It should be in the exact same location as it was on the other frame too. The operation tool is also how you can make adjustments to your lines. In this case, I'm going to copy just the whole folder for the lace hem of the dress. Then I turn off the outlining and I change the brush shape to a normal pen instead of the lace. Still selected with the operation tool, I can change the width of the brush to make it thinner, and then use the arrow keys on my keyboard to adjust the position. Now it can act as the actual hem of the dress and cover up the rough edge of the lace. Non-tool tip, skirts are easier to draw in general if you draw at the bottom and then connect it to the waist of the dress, it's definitely a big help for me. And bonus tip! I didn't get a chance to demonstrate it earlier, so real quick while we're talking about the operation tool. I'm using the tween slash keyframe feature we talked about earlier to give her arm just a tiny bit of movement. Before I even think about moving the arm, I use the operation tool to drag this little crosshair in the center of the frame up to the pivot point of the limb. You can think of it as the peg holding the frame to your canvas. Because the keyframes can only move the whole layer and not the image of the layer, if that makes sense, this determines where your image turns from. So for rotating, do this first so that all of your keyframes afterwards will keep the pivot in the correct place for the object you're trying to move. Honestly, this was awful to not know before, so I consider this the most helpful thing to know if you want to do any kind of tweening stuff. And 
that's it. 10-ish tips for making your animation life easier in Clip Studio Paint. If this is your go-to software for animating like it is for me, you might have already known some of these. But I hope that at least one of them was new to you so that this video helped. I'll be offering the clip files for the three example animations I made for this video on itch.io in a link in the description. They'll all be free, since they're for educational use, but there will be an option for leaving a tip if you are so inclined. This video was pretty fun to make too, so if you want to know anything else about my process or have questions about something you want me to make a video explaining, feel free to let me know in the comments or wherever, which speaking of wherever, plug plug plug. You can find me on Twitter, DeviantArt, or Buzzly, links for all of those below. And if you want like 20-ish more minutes of me just animating and spewing information at you, here's an old video of mine with a very slow speed animation and text commentary. It's a straight ahead animation, so it's not quite like my usual process, and it's just the roughs, but it's got a little bit of information in there. Thanks for sticking around for the whole thing, and happy animating!